guys, this is Susie here. Um, it's nice to be back and today I'll keep it very short and sweet so that we can uh, cover lots of stuff in this particular video. A lot of people have sent me a message asking how do I look after desert rose here in Victoria, Australia. So we're talking about this particular state which has, you know, really cold winters and hot summers. And to keep your desert rose, which is Aedium obesum in its um, the scientific name, um, this particular plant does require tropical type of climate. Like Queenslanders here in Australia, they actually grow them outdoors. And here in Victoria, we tend to have them indoors. But to have them indoors, especially during winter months, they still need to be between or over 20 to 28 degrees temperature, right in between those, uh, you know, temperature in Celsius. And um, first of all, let me talk to you about the structure of this particular plant. So I'll come closer so I can talk what happens to this plant. Now, as you can see, this is quite a short, about one, two, three, about six centimeters tall and at the bottom you can see quite a swollen um, stem or, or, or the trunk they call it the trunk is quite swollen so we call this particular bit of this particular plant cordex so to to have the cordex in a plant which really means that the plant has the ability to store its own water so it's it's like a water tank really and they are called desert rose or desert plant and it literally grows in desert so that's why it has this capacity to um, store water so that um, during summer months or in the desert you know it can utilize its own watering system and keeping plant nice and healthy but here in Victoria obviously you don't need to overwater it but you need to understand that it is a tropical plant and it is an outdoor plant so to be able to give that type of um, environment we need to have a temperature around about 20 to 25 degrees for this plant to even survive you can't have it below 15 degrees because it will just melt away it will just go wishy-washy and um, gluggy you know because it's just not liking the temperature so that's one thing you've got to remember that temperature is very important not so much the humidity it doesn't care about the humidity it just cares about how much heat it does have and secondly that being in a being a desert plant it requires a good drainage drainage is so important which means as soon as you water this plant um, it must run down rather quickly and you, for that, you need a lot of gravelly type of um, soil um, to, to be able to plant this uh, little desert rose. So today, that's what we're going to do. And you can make a really good bonsai out of a desert plant because it loves to be in a bonsai, you know, shallow uh, one to two uh, inches or in other words, about four centimeters in height, like shallow dish like this. And it will do really well. And the flowers are just so pretty. So remembering all those things um, that a plant needs, it also requires like in, in Victoria, you need to put this plant outdoors for, a, for an hour, you know, um, so that it gets enough sun to be able to set flowers. So during winter months even, leave it outdoors or somewhere um, where it's not gonna be windy, and it's not the leaves not gonna get scorched by too cold or too hot, just the right temperature. I mean, you you know you can grow them in partial shade. It does uh, do quite well in that type of environment. But here in Victoria, as we know, we we normally like to have our outdoor plants indoors, in a sunroom or in a place where it's gonna get some amount of sun. Now, um, other than that, and watering is very important, you do not overwater or you do not water every day or even once a week. 
you may require to water this plant maybe once fortnight and a little bit and make sure that it drains well it does not sit in water because that's what it hates and and that's why we lose this sort of plants here in Victoria because number one it's so cold in winter and secondly um, it's um, the environment is not right so you've got to make sure that you give this plant a really good environment heat nice temperature minimal watering and make sure that it sees sun at least one, uh, one hour a day so you know morning sun is always good because it's not as hot and it's really quite um, minimal sun or not really hot just the right amount of sun that this plant needs now i'm going to here i've got some soil as you can see right in front of me and this soil is actually got chunks of too much um, wood, wood stuff. This is what this plant wouldn't like, too much woody stuff, because this particular company that I used to buy these, Scots, used to have a really good quality um, cacti and succulent mix, but of recent times, it is not really good stuff, because they obviously put too much... Um, the, the the bark chips and stuff and that's what you know the desert roses or even cacti do not like not too much soily stuff and you know i've had a lot of complaints or people saying that this particular company now just make rubbish um, cacti and succulent mix so you choose you know the the company that actually does a good uh, mixture for the cacti and succulents which means it needs quite a quite a bit of gravel or gravelly type of soil to be able to plant this kind of plants as you can see in front i've got heaps of you know this uh, uh desert roses for sale i've got five colors so um you know and, and i'm sure the customers would be uh, wanting to know more uh, information about it and i've got a pot you can't plant this plant in a in a long like height wise in a long pot. It needs to be um, width wise. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but this is a small plant, so you really need this um, at least about ten centimeter in, in width and perhaps ten, if not six to seven centimeter in height. I mean, this one is a little bit too high, but I'm just showing you. The sort of pot you really need. You need a low based um, pot and and not too big for this small plant. If it was a bigger plant, you go by the size of the pot. So what I'm first of all I'm gonna do is got a hole, so I must make sure that the uh, pots do have holes and mix your soil. So because it's got so much of um, you know plant matter in it it's really not really that suitable for desert rose so i've got here perlite and i'm going to use some perlite to mix it in perlite is really good because it makes a good drainage that's what i like about uh, perlite and <coughs> and i've here i've got a lot of uh, sort of gravelly type of soil because it needs more gravel than it really has and i'm using um, scoria gravel you can use any type of um, horticultural gravel that your nursery might have in here you know nurseries do have horticultural gravel you, you most welcome to use that or some people like using sand that's fine and um, mix it all in so you, you you've got a nice gravelly type of soil and make sure that it drains drains well and also uh, what you really need is what uh, you can also mix um, a little bit not a great deal uh, NPK which is a uh, nitrogen phosphorus and potassium uh, slow release fertilizer that just helps not too much but just one or two or three as, I, as I'm doing uh, if you have too much the plant does not like over fertilize because it's a natural plant it grows wild in other parts of the world and here we just trying to make sure that we have all these things what this particular plant requires and now that I have done that I'm just gonna fill this pot up 
which I have done. And I'm just going to set this plant in. As you can see, this soil is, you know, quite a gravelly type of a soil. So I'm just going to set it just like that, as you can see. And make sure that the cordex is maybe a little bit too much, I think. Hang on. That's, that's better. And the cordex is not buried in. That, that's the most important thing that you do not bury the cordex. Now, that's pretty good as far as I can see. Have a look. And on the top, it's got a bit of room there. Make sure there's a bit of room. And you can use scoria that I have got here, which is just gravel. Or you could use some fancy stones uh, on the top, which is fine. Scoria is really good. It's a natural product. Plus, it's... Um, it, the, 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 a lot of plants do love scoria and they grow really really well in, in, in scoria this kind of gravelly soil that's my plant already potted and and things and I would give perhaps I don't know about half a cup of water just to settle the plant as soon as you have planted it make sure that the plant is all settled in properly and then leave it somewhere near your windowsill or where it gets about an hour's sun or um, somewhere warm because, you know, Victoria is a state that has very fluctuating temperatures. One minute is hot, next minute is cold. And, and this, this year we've had more cold days than warm days. And, and to make sure that you have them at least 25 degrees is an ideal temperature for this particular plant to actually survive. Don't leave it somewhere that's really cold, you know, um, it just won't survive. And then you will find that this particular plant, as it grows, it will give you nice um, side, you know, stems. And as, as you can see in this particular plant, if you have a close look, see these little babies here, here, and it will... You know, that's where you can make it into a um, Japanese, um, what's the word for the bonsai? That's right, Japanese bonsai. You can create it because as soon as these side ones, all these um, stems grow, you can uh, wire them and let it grow whichever way you want. And then it will set lovely flowers. I mean... That's where a lot of people, why they, a lot of people have that as a bonsai, because it is really striking when you see that particular plant. There is not much more that I could talk about this plant, and do not overwater, because it's, it, that's one thing this plant does not like. So um, I'm going to give about, say, half a cup, and I probably won't water it for another two to three weeks. And the plant will let you know that it needs watering, you know. So be careful how much you water. Now, that's it for today. And hopefully I'll be back in action a lot more often. I know I'm a little bit rusty, um, things that um, I tend to forget a bit these days. Um, but hopefully that will start coming in when I do more videos. And it's nice to see you all. And thank you for watching my video for today. Take care. Bye for now.